I first reviewed Fubo on this YouTube channel back in 2021, but since then some things have changed. Fubo added some channels, took away some others, and like pretty much every other streaming service, raised their prices. After these changes, what do I think of Fubo? And how do I think it compares to the competition? In this video, I'll cover the basics of Fubo, their plans and pricing, channel lineup, the Fubo app, and in the end, give my final verdict on if I think Fubo is worth it. If you want to skip ahead to anything, I'll have chapter times in the description of this video. But first, let's start out with the basics. What is Fubo? Fubo, which is formerly known as Fubo TV, is a live TV streaming service that provides access to over 170 live channels that stream over the internet. These aren't watered down versions of the channels, they're the same live feeds of the channels that you'd get if you had a cable subscription. Unlike cable though, you're not locked into a long term contract and there's no physical equipment to install. A big emphasis with Fubo is on sports, and you'll find some regional sports networks that Fubo carries that their competitors do not. More on that later. But even though their marketing really emphasizes sports, You'll also get lots of entertainment and news channels, many of which you'd also find on streaming services like YouTube TV or Hulu Plus Live TV. Fubo TV remains one of my personal favorites based on their interface and features, which I think make it a great option for first time cord cutters. But now let's get on to the specifics. I'll get this out of the way first. With plans starting at $74.99 a month, Fubo TV is an investment, but considering many people pay over $100 a month for the TV portion of their cable package, it does still tend to be a little bit cheaper than cable. And all of their plans with Fubo are month to month, meaning you can cancel at any time without a penalty. So if, for example, you wanted to sign up for Fubo during the NFL season and cancel on the off season, you could do that, something that would be logistically very difficult with cable. Fubo offers three different plans with the English language channels, ranging from $74.99 a month to $94.99 a month, and one package with Spanish language channels for $32.99 a month. This pricing puts Fubo in line with its nearest competitors like YouTube TV and DirecTV Stream. But one thing you won't see many mentioned on the homepage of Fubo's website is a pesky little fee. This is to offset the cost of the regional sports networks, although this fee does show up once you get to the checkout screen. This fee only applies to customers and zip codes that carry regional sports networks, and it can range up to $13.99 a month on top of their regular pricing. And if you live in one of these zip codes, there's no way to opt out of this fee. On all of their plans, Fubo offers free trials for first-time customers. I'll have a link in the description if you want to take advantage of that free trial. So now let's get into the channel lineup. Even with their lowest price plan, they have a robust lineup of over 170 channels, which gives them more channels than some of their competition. You'll get local networks, including the big four broadcasters, Fox, ABC, NBC, and CBS. Although make sure to plug in your zip code on their website to double check the local channels because those do vary by region. Sports networks include ESPN, NFL Network, and FS1, as well as yes, those regional sports networks. At this point, I've mentioned regional sports networks a few times, and you might be wondering, what is a regional sports network? These are channels that are broadcast in a specific area that show the sports games from the teams in a specific city. So for example, I live in the Kansas City area. If I wanna watch most of the Kansas City Royals baseball games, I need access to Bally Sports Kansas City. YouTube TV doesn't carry Bally Sports. Hulu Plus Live TV doesn't carry Bally Sports. But you know who does carry Bally Sports? Fubo. Some of the other regional sports networks they carry include Altitude Sports, Marquee Sports Network, NBC Sports, NESN, and Sportsnet. I've included the full list here if you want to pause the video and take note, or you can also follow the link in the description, plug in your zip code, and see their channel lineup in your area. There's also some sports networks like NFL Red Zone, NBA TV, NHL Network, and MLB TV, that come with either one of their higher priced plans or you can get them as add-ons. And I should note, if you sign up for quarterly billing instead of monthly billing, you'll get some extra sports channels thrown in at no extra cost with the base plan. 
Besides that, all of their plans include news channels like CBS News, Fox News, The Weather Channel, Newsmax, and MSNBC. There's also various entertainment channels such as Hallmark Channel, Food Network, E! USA, TV Land, VH1, FX, Bravo, Oxygen, Disney Channel, Paramount Network, and TLC. But let's get on to the channels that are not included. One of the biggest questions I got on my original video about Fubo was if Fubo included TBS, TNT, and True TV with their streaming service. The answer to this question is still unfortunately no. They're not included with the channel lineup. So that means if you want to watch the MLB or NBA games that are broadcast on those channels, you'll need to look elsewhere. The good news is, if you're subscribed to Max, the streaming service formerly known as HBO Max, they now show live games from TBS and TNT. So that could be a potential workaround if you're a Max subscriber or plan to become a Max subscriber. I'll also take note that you won't find any of the channels included with AMC Network or A&E Networks on Fubo's plans either. But let's get on to the Fubo app. You can download and watch Fubo on a whole range of devices, including smart TVs, streaming players, phones, tablets, and gaming consoles. These include devices made by Amazon, Apple, Google, LG, Vizio, Xbox, and Roku. All of their plans allow you to stream on up to 10 devices at once, which is a big difference from their competitors. This is great if you have a big family where multiple people are going to be watching TV at the same time. Now, when it comes to recording shows, they might not have an unlimited DVR the way YouTube TV does, but I honestly don't mind because a benefit with Fubo is that you can keep your recordings forever. There's no time limit after nine months or six months or 12 months that they expire. You can also choose to record individual episodes of a show rather than just setting a show to record indefinitely whenever it's on, which is the way YouTube TV is set up and I've always thought was a little bit odd. If you're switching from cable to streaming, you won't have to relearn how to watch TV with Fubo, and that's one of the things I like best about it. This might sound like a really simple thing, but at least with the Apple TV version of the app, if you want to switch between channels, all you have to do is flip back and forth. Amongst the live TV streaming services I've seen, this is the one that makes it easiest to just surf through the channels. Some of the other live TV streaming services make you close out of your channel, go into the guide, and pick another channel. It takes a few seconds, and it's just kind of cumbersome. Another neat feature that they offer to Apple TV users is multi-view. You can view up to four channels at once and display sports scores at the bottom of the screen. Flipping between them is pretty easy. It kind of feels like you're in a command center or the Batcave. It's pretty cool. And while multi-view is only available on Apple TV now, they have begun beta testing it for Android TV and Amazon Fire TV, so hopefully this will pop up on some more devices in the near future. So on to my final verdict. Is Fubo TV worth it? I love the interface with Fubo TV's app. If you're a first-time cord cutter that's switching from cable to streaming, I think this is a great option that really makes it easy to watch TV. And while I do prefer the Apple TV version of the app, no matter what device I've used Fubo on, it's always worked really well. And if you're trying to find a regional sports network like Bally Sports or NBC Sports, then Fubo has a leg up on some of their competition like YouTube TV and Hulu Plus Live TV that don't carry those channels. And yes, there are some pros and cons with their channel lineup. Whether it's worth the cost of admission will depend on what shows and sports you're looking to watch. And I do have to say once more that the omission of TNT, TBS, and True TV remains a thorn in the side for Fubo because you won't be able to watch the basketball and baseball games that are broadcast on those networks. But if your primary concern is football, maybe some soccer, maybe some other sports, especially if they're on a regional sports network, then it's hard to go wrong with Fubo. Overall, Fubo makes for a robust alternative to cable that's great for cord cutters who enjoy watching live sports. If you'd like to try out Fubo, the company was kind enough to offer an exclusive deal for followers of Shall I Stream It. You can get 7 days free and 15% off your first month if you go to fubotv.com forward slash shall I stream it. There will be a link in the description as well as in the comment section. Or if you're watching this video on your TV, you can scan the QR code with the camera app on your phone and it will take you to Fubo's website. So, what do you think? Have you signed up for Fubo? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. 
Also, subscribe to this YouTube channel to stay up to date with all things streaming. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye bye.